Good afternoon and welcome back. <laughs> I uh, Today we are going to be upgrading the storage of this Dell Precision 3470. All right. So I guess to give a, a brief history of this product, I purchased it maybe about a month ago now and it arrived with 256 gigs of storage and 32 gigs of RAM. So in the previous video, I showed you how to remove the bottom and insert a second DIMM of RAM. I kind of pointed at the uh, the SSD and showing that, hey, this is what you, you know, what you need to remove in order to install a new uh, NVMe SSD. But I figured, hey, if I actually plan on upgrading the device, I might as well go ahead and give you guys uh, some pointers and some tips on doing that. So as I said before, this particular machine came with 256 gigs of storage. When I when it first arrived, I did put 512 gigs of storage in there, but I ended up saying, you know what? I think I need a terabyte of space. So now I went and purchased, or I've gone and purchased a Samsung 980 Pro uh, NVMe SSD. So we'll see exactly the type of performance I end up getting out of that. As always, whoops, sorry about that. As always, I'll let you know that I will be using my iFixit toolkit to disassemble this machine. And let's get our screwdriver. And I have raved about this in the past, but it also makes sense to bring it up today because this is a machine for professionals. And one thing about this machine that other machines also have are one, Phillips head screws, okay, and these screws are captive, meaning they don't come out of the actual bottom or the, the case of the, lap, of the laptop. And of course, if we think about other machines that have Pro in their name, one machine that always comes to mind is the MacBook Pro, which, does it have Phillips head screws? No, it has a proprietary head known as a pentalobe screwdriver. Why on earth did Apple find or feel the need to make their own screw head? I don't know, but all it does is just make it one step more difficult to remove a screw. Fortunately, iFixit includes a pentalobe screw bit. In fact, I think there are two in there, one for MacBooks and then others for iPhones. Uh, but yeah, that's another thing. That's that's one thing that those MacBooks definitely have that, that are kind of sucky. Also, those screws aren't captive. So is it the end of the world that the, the screws come fully out when you remove them from the body of the machine? No, it's not. But eh, it's just one more thing to keep track of. Make sure I get all my screws over here. Yep, got that. All right. And... I've taken this apart before, and it's not the most difficult thing to do, but you know, there are some clips in there. Hopefully you'll hear them pop. But the MacBook definitely has some retaining clips in there that are just extremely difficult to actually get out. Got that side. All right. Move that to the side. Now, let's turn this this way. And we are still in frame. Cool. Excuse me. Now, in the earlier video, I showed how to install the DIM slots, or the, sorry, <laughs> the RAM in the DIM slots. It came with one and I just populated the, the second slot. Over here, we have our NVMe SSD. So how nice is it that the screws to, how nice is it that the screws that hold the bottom of the case are Phillips and the screw that holds this NVMe uh, drive in place is also Phillips. Didn't have to change my, my, my screwdriver bit. Pull this little guy out. Uh -oh. It looks like there's one more screw right here. Also Phillips head. There we go. And it's nice that these iFixit driver bits, uh, or these bits are, everything's magnetic. 
So you don't have to worry about the panes falling. There we go. And I'll put that over here. And I guess I could open this already, but no time like right now to do it. And then we have our 980 Pro PCI 4.0 NVMe SSD. All right, one terabyte. Yep, exactly what I was looking for. All right, and it is as simple as taking it out and inserting it. Sorry, I just moved a lot closer to the microphone. If you can hear my breathing, I do apologize. <laughs> Had it upside down right there. Sorry. Right. Boom. Yep. That's in place. Cool. Now let me get... So this little piece of metal isn't really part of the drive, but it is uh, something that came with the machine. So I uh, figured I'd include it. It looks like it's kind of a heat sink or a heat spreader, maybe to help dissipate some of the heat that these drives generate. Take my screw. See, magnetic. Don't know if that was in the frame, but all right. Okay. Let me just check here that clip that's in where it needs to be. All right, looks like we're good to go. So just gonna do everything in reverse. Take our bottom cover. Back on. And reattach. And release your heart screws. So I'm taking a nice solid push to make sure everything works. Yeah. One screw over here that I didn't get. Okay. All right. Yep, everything is secured as it's supposed to be. Cool. Now I'm going to turn this on after I reposition the camera. should happen is it should power on and it should inform us that it cannot find an operating system. Let's see if that happens. And in fact, it might let us know that the amount of storage has changed. It did let me know that when I installed more RAM. And in fact, it took a little longer to, to boot than it normally does. So let's see what happens. As expected, it's saying, uh, we don't know how to boot, <laughs> but that's what's supposed to happen. So I, and, and in fact, it's looking to, to probably, I guess, pixie boot to boot over the, uh, the internet or over the network. Um, and this, and again, this is exactly what's supposed to happen because there is no operating system installed on the drive that I just installed. I made a video showing you how to create a windows 10 and windows 11 USB drive or installation USB drive. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll definitely include those down in the, the description of the video. But looks like we are in business. So I'm going to go ahead and do everything I need to do to reinstall Windows. And then I'm going to start using this machine.